Real America is looking into the activities 40 years ago of the Church Committee, which did a broad examination of the work of the FBI, the CIA, and the NSA. Today, as we continue, we're going to be looking at testimony of two FBI informants before the committee. From December 22, 1975, we're going to show you a clip of Klu a Ku Klux Klan FBI informant by the name of Thomas Rowe. He described how he be participated in beatings of civil rights activists during the Freedom Riders movement in Birmingham, Alabama. Let's watch. Right. In connection with the Freedom Riders incident that you mentioned, uh, did you inform the FBI about planned violence prior to that incident? Sir, I gave the inf uh, FBI information pertaining to the Freedom Riders to saw approximately three weeks before it occurred. And what did you tell them? I stated to them that I had been contacted by a Birmingham City detective who in turn wanted me to meet with a uh, high-ranking officer of the Birmingham Police Department to set a reception for the Freedom Riders. You mean the Birmingham policeman set up the beating of the Freedom Riders and you told the FBI that? That's correct, sir. Uh, and then were they beaten? They were beaten very badly, yes. And did the Birmingham police give you the time that they promised to give you to perform the beat? Yes, sir. We were promised uh, 15 minutes with absolutely no intervention from any police officer whatsoever. Uh, the information was passed on to the Bureau. They, we had our 15 minutes. Approximately 15 minutes after the Freedom Riders uh, were attacked, uh, a police officer ran over to me and stated, God damn it, God damn it, get out of here, get them out of here. Your 15 minutes are up, we're sending the crew in. So, Fritz Schwartz, watching this, let me have you underscore for the public exactly what it is that we're hearing here. What I'm, I'm trying to understand is that we just heard testimony that the FBI and the Birmingham police colluded to allow people to come in and beat the Freedom Riders unaffected for 15 minutes before the authorities moved in. Is that, is that correct? Is that what we just heard? That's what you just heard, and that's what happened that day. We had two witnesses, Gary Thomas Rowe, who testified with a hood over his head that I'll tell you about in a minute, and a young woman who was a, in the Vietnam Veterans Against the War. Maybe she worked for that group, and she was an informer for the FBI. Now, again, our, our point was not you should not have any informers. Um, informers are a legitimate law enforcement tool. However, there was absolutely no process for deciding what, how and who you would pick as an informer. And as that story about um, knowing beatings of the Freedom Riders shows, the informers sometimes do some very bad things in order to maintain their credibility. Now, Roe uh, had come out into the public because he testified in a murder trial uh, against three Ku Klux Klan people who had murdered uh, Viola Leoso, a civil rights worker who was on a march in the South, maybe in Selma, uh, and she was shot by the three Ku Klux Klan people and killed um, and because she was riding in a car with two black young men. Um, so he had become public and uh, gone public and testified at the murder trial against the three, his three confederates in the Ku Klux Klan. With about half an hour to go before the hearing, he said to me, I can't appear on television. And we really wanted him on television because it was such a dramatic story. And under the rules of the Senate, a w at least then, a witness who didn't want to appear on television didn't have to appear on television. So I came up with the idea of putting a bag over his head and slits over his eyes and maybe for his mouth so that he could see and talk. I thought that was a pretty clever idea. So, uh, one of the assistants for Senator Tower, who was presiding that day, Frank Church was away, um, said, you, you did that in order to embarrass Senator Tower. Now, Senator Tower never said any such thing to me, and I think if he'd thought it, he would have said it. Uh, but um, I think it was a great idea, and it got this guy to testify, and it perhaps added a little bit of drama for having this 
person with a bag over his head giving that very dramatic testimony that you just played. And as a matter of fact, I quit very shortly after working for the Bureau because of this incident. I felt that my exact phrase was, why wasn't something done?